Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the introduction to the abomination of desolation. I'm going to start breaking these studies up into smaller segments so that I can post to different sites such as minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, and bitshoot, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E.com. Since um, the tube and um, that bright eon site is uh, kind of worthless, and I don't know how long I'm going to be on them, so I'm going to check out some other things. Now, before I, this is going to be the introduction, and this is just some thoughts. And my uh, book is going to be kind of along the same lines. I've been working on it, but I've been busy. I need to retire, but uh, it's like everybody else, no money, right? Well, this is the deal. If you've been watching the news, you know, they've been uh, trying to blame Iran for attacking that, uh, what was it, a Japanese oil tanker. Now, I want you to think about it. What, what advantage is it to Iran to attack an oil vessel, uh, vessel? None. I mean, you know, they're selling oil to... I believe Iran sells oil to Japan, so why would they do that? Now, the thing is, according to other news sources, the crew on the oil tanker that was attacked said it was a missile. They saw a missile, not a mine. Trump and his ilk have been saying, oh, it was an Iranian mine. Well, you know, the Iranians have, it's not to their advantage to attack this, you know, and and then we're sending an, uh, an attack drone over there and they shoot it down. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, somebody's flying an attack drone over my country. I'd probably, I'd shoot it down too. So they're trying to, to do another war. I mean, let's face it. We've been in Afghanistan for 18 years, people. And guess what they have in Afghanistan? Natural gas, oil, and lithium. Take a look at your batteries in your computers, in your tel uh, smartphones. There's lithium batteries. Where do you think they're getting this stuff from? Afghanistan. So we just went over there with troops and basically took it, you know, instead of paying for it. But, um, you know, did, did Iraq have anything to do with 9-11? No. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. According to the official narrative that even Trump, before he was president, came up with, he said um, it was all the Saudis. It was all Saudi nationals that were involved in 9-11. Of course, I don't believe that, but that's the official narrative. Um, but um, after all, who benefited with 9-11? Not, not any of the uh, Arabic countries. They didn't, they didn't benefit. There is a country in the Middle East that benefited, but they're not Arabic. So, you know, uh, but if Saudi Arabia nationals were involved in 9-11, like the official narrative was, why didn't we attack Saudi Arabia? Why did we go after Iraq? They had nothing to do with it. Of course, we went over there and stole all of Iraq's gold and their oil. So, you know, what can I tell you? But enough of politics. Let's take a look at something different. There are, there's a country in the Middle East, a group of people, uh, they rhyme with news, N-E-W-S, and 
the uh, replace the letter N with a J. It starts with a J and it rhymes with news. And um, they their purpose is to destroy all Muslim Islamic opposition to building a temple. They want to build a temple. Now, I believe, personally, I believe that is the abomination of desolation. Now, there were two major temples that were destroyed in the history of the world. The first one was destroyed by the Babylonians, and you can read about that in the oh, book of Jeremiah. The book of Daniel was uh, when Daniel, who was a prince of Judah, talks about how he and everybody that was left was taken to Babylon. But the Babylonians came in, destroyed the temple and Jerusalem, and, um, and then approximately 70 AD, so did the Romans, came in and destroyed the temple, which was Herod's temple. And what I find interesting is that the both temples were destroyed on the same exact anniversary day. Not the same year, but the same exact day. How is that for a message telling a certain group of people that um, he didn't like the temple worship that they were doing? So the Lord God Father destroyed, allowed Babylon and Rome to destroy them on the same exact anniversary of the same exact day. How's that for a message? That is some message, huh? So, now the, the thing is, some people will tell you that the Romans um, performed the abomination of desolation. I don't believe that. First of all, the general, one of the generals that was in charge was named Titus. Titus was a general. Now, yeah, I think it's Matthew 24 or uh, and, Matt, and Thessalonians where it talks about the uh, man of sin going into the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he is God. And I'm going to go more into detail. This is just the introduction. Uh, if a general went into the temple and proclaimed himself God, I think the Roman emperor would have had him killed. Okay. I mean, can you imagine a general in the army at the Pentagon claiming that he's God and Trump and Congress and everybody else has to work, bow down and worship him? Do you, think, do you think Congress and Trump would have a problem with that? Personally, I think they would. The Roman emperor would not tolerate a mere general under his control telling the emperor that he has to worship him as God. I don't think so. Who spreads these lies? Preachers do. That's who. So, and besides that, did you know that General Titus was the son? The son, the actual son of the emperor. Now, suppose a son walks up to his dad and says, oh, I'm God, you're going to have to worship me. Uh, you, you think, I don't know, I just don't see, I just don't see that happening. But hey, that's just my opinion, and what do I know? I'm just some guy that spends too much time studying, uh, studying the Bible, that's all, and history. I've studied history and the Bible. So what is the abomination of desolation? Well, personally, I think it was every blood sacrifice that the temple priest did after Christ died on the cross and the temple had the veil in the Holy of Holies and the priest, to really understand all this, you'd have to read the book of Leviticus because it tells the Levitical priesthood, who were the temple priests, supposed to be anyways, um, possibly in the days of the Babylonian captivity. Uh, but Herod, Herod, I doubt if the Levitical priest 
were in the temple in his day. I'm not sure. Uh, he wanted people that were... Herod was an, of Edomite, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian who worked for the Romans. But um, Herod, you know, the guy that tried to kill all the children in Bethlehem to kill Christ. But um, he wanted people that were loyal to him and not the Lord. So were they Levites? I don't know. I don't. I have a hard time believing it. Can I prove it? No, absolutely not. But I just know how politicians are. And that's what Herod was, a politician. He was not a man of God by any means. The whole family, I mean, let's face it. But the Levitical priesthood had, the high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies once a year and offer a sacrifice. And there was a, a veil and according to legend, they would tie a rope around his ankle and bells. And if the and the bells were to tell the people that he was still moving, and he had a rope, and if the Lord did not accept his sacrifice, he would kill him. According to legend, I'm not sure. I don't think the book of Leviticus covers this. It's been a long time since I've read the book of Leviticus. I mean, it doesn't apply to Christians doesn't apply to anybody for the most part. The blood sacrifice parts. That was the part that was nailed to the cross, not the Ten Commandments, by the way. But um, if he died, the bell quit ringing, they would pull him out of the Holy of Holies by a rope since they couldn't go in to get him. So I'll cover this more in detail in another study. So... But that's what I believe. I believe the abomination of desolation was performed when the temple priests under Herod performed blood sacrifices. And they did it for approximately, oh, approximately 30-something years. Some people say that Christ was about, it was about 33, 34 A.D. and the temple was destroyed approximately 70 A.D. Uh, there's some controversy over the dating, but, you know, I'm not an expert. I wasn't there, so I don't know. I just know there's a lot of disinformation out there to confuse and divide the sheep. And goats are really good at that. So, all right, well, in our next study, we are going to go to Daniel chapter 9. And what's interesting is when we get to the Feast of Weeks, um, the Feast of Weeks corresponds with the day of Pentecost. You know, when everybody was in the temple in the book of Acts and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And from what I understand, it was 50 weeks after Passover, not Easter, Passover. Christ was the Passover lamb, not the Easter bunny. So that's, you know, another thing that the, um, the enemy did. All right, so let's, this is the intro. And um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.